Good morning. Uh, this is Gary Gillespie Israel. My mother was Dorothy Gillespie of the artist. I'm in her studio up here in the Catskills, and I'm really excited to be talking about her private collection, uh, along with Art Jones. And uh, Art Jones will be talking about some of the, the pieces. I, uh, I knew that my mother was a collector of art, um, and she got me involved in art, uh, collecting art. It was very important for my mother to collect other artists, whether or not it was purchasing art from other artists or um, trading art with other artists. Uh, after she passed away in 2012, uh, at the age of 92, I started to go around to studio uh, artist studios and meet many of the artists. And several of those artists are actually in this collection that you'll see at Rano College. Uh, I personally started collecting art in 1972 when my mother asked for $1,000. That was a lot of money back then, but uh, she said she had a group of artists and she wanted me to start collecting art. And so I gave her $1,000 and I got artists, uh, women artists, uh, actually all women artists, because at that time it was the women's movement and my mother really supported women artists at that time. So I'm really excited that I have lots of, of artists that I've collected since 1972. I know uh, that this collection that you'll see at Rano College uh, is not exactly uh, the rarest collection. Uh, she actually considered a modest collection of works of uh, wonderful, dedicated artists, uh, some of whom my mother knew, such as Louise Nevelson, and you'll see those, uh, Louise Nevelson. Uh, one thing that my mother instilled in me as a collector is that it's temporary. And I think this is a good example because after my mother collected all that art over the years, in 2012, she passed away, and then it was passed on to me and will be passed on to the Dorothy M. Gillespie Foundation, which will continue to have that. Um, and so that, that's important to know that as a collector, it's basically on loan to the person. Um, uh, can I add something sure. to that, Gary? Please. Because I remember uh, her discussing that at length with, uh, with me and with other people when she uh, came to Radford University. And I should point out that uh, at the time that I knew her, I was the chair of the Department of Art at Radford University. Um, and Radford had an interesting connection to her because uh, her parents actually were <laughs> from Radford, um, but she grew up in Roanoke. Um, so she connected, she sort of bonded with Rad Radford and um, became a very important patron of Radford University. Uh, I uh, had the opportunity to get to know her and to get her appointed as a distinguished visiting artist at Radford University and uh, also helped to set up a small sculpture studio. Um, the small sculpture was wearable sculpture. It was an enameling studio that she had. Uh, but she spoke uh, at length about uh, how collections, how private collections uh, are not really, from her point of view, consisting of works that are owned by people, but instead uh, the person who collects, she regards more as a caretaker, someone who has temporary possession of these objects and responsibilities, responsibilities to ensure that in the future, these uh, objects will fall into good hands and good use. I, so I just wanted to add that. Thank you. In fact, that brings us to a, a, a portrait that was done my, by my mother, Alice Neal did a portrait. And oh, yes, yes. In 1976, and she had an opportunity, my mother had an opportunity to purchase it, which I'm sorry as her son that she didn't because of okay. course now it's worth millions of dollars. But one of the reasons I heard that she didn't want to purchase it is she felt that it should be out in the public and that if she had purchased it, it would become one of her collections and she felt it was too important 
And, and so uh, she also had an opportunity to buy Jackson Pollock's in the 40s and 50s. Yes. Uh, and again, I said to her, but mom, your children would have been so happy if you had purchased those. And she looked at me and she says, Gary, I didn't like him as a person and I <laughs> didn't like his art. That being said, she loved Lee, uh, Lee Krasner yeah. and um, I'm very happy that I have a Lee Krasner. One of the 10 pieces uh, that I purchased in 1972 was Lee Krasner. So uh, yeah. I'm really happy and I know my mother would be so happy that Lee Krasner is now getting the recognition that she deserves. Uh, because she was the one who really pushed Jackson Pollock, and that's that's just a, a, a side note. Uh, my yes, author without with you know without uh, uh, the marketing abilities of Lee Krasner, uh, Pollock uh, his reputation wouldn't be what it is today, uh, which was built very largely after his death by his widow, uh, okay. who is also a very important artist. I, I, I um, couldn't agree more. And one of the things that my mother um, always said about collecting art was that you don't collect art as an investment. And she really meant that mm -hmm. uh, because maybe she would have bought a Jackson Pollock as an investment. Alice Neal in the 1976 uh, was certainly worth the $10,000 that Alice Neal was mm -hmm. able to charge my mother. So mm -hmm. someone might say, yes, but she has. Um, uh, um, uh, not Elaine, oh, well, Elaine de Kooning, uh, but um, who's the artist that I'm thinking about uh, will come to me. But anyway, she traded uh, her work to, to get these pieces from mm -hmm. the, I mentioned her name before, it's probably the, the most expensive work uh, that's in the collection. Uh, you had mentioned, uh, well, you had mentioned Alice Neal and Louise Nevelson. Louise Nevelson, it, it skipped my mind. Louise Nevelson, so someone, okay, might, yes. someone might say, yes, but your mother uh, has Louise Nevelson's. Well, she traded her art. She didn't right. buy, and she <laughs> bought it as an investment. Yeah, something I'd like to add to what you said before about your mother not wanting to uh, uh, acquire important works in her collection that she would be taking out of circulation from public view. Uh, the reality is, though, that uh, she lent her exhibition, he, she lent her collection to Radford University for many years, and uh, that way they were put on exhibition. Um, you know, they were part of a collection that was being used uh, not just for uh, the public to see, but also in education, because the uh, it it really was uh, uh, the Radford University art collection is really used primarily to educate uh, students as well as the public. Yeah. So uh, even though she thought she was taking things out of circulation by collecting, in a way, she was putting them into circulation. That's uh, a good point. Um, some of the artists that are in this collection, I've reached out to, and you probably know Paul Fretz, of course. Of course, yeah. Because some of the people she has in the collection are individuals she knew, uh, you know, who maybe didn't become famous artists, but were really very high quality artists, like Paul Fretz is a good example. Uh, Paul Fretz uh, is someone who uh, doesn't, uh, have very much public exposure um, outside of Virginia, but uh, he's, a, he's really quite a, a good artist. He's a great artist. Uh, and uh, she would have interesting dialogues with him whenever she visited Radford. Uh, Paul Fritz was uh, at one point a student of Elaine de Kooning. I should point that out. And can I add something about Elaine de Kooning? Yes. Uh, uh, Lane de Kooning and my mother had such a good relationship that I have her original sketchbook that I found unbeknownst to me when my mother passed away in 2012 and I went mm -hmm. through her studios in New York City and here in the Catskills, I found a sketchbook uh, of Lane de Kooning's 1976 mm -hmm. from the time she was in Paris and uh, my mother was given this sketchbook 
And the following year, there was a painting that Elaine de Kooning did based on that sketchbook. So uh, my mother really, I learned a lot after she passed away, had such good relationships with all these artists. Uh, the Ninth Street Women, I don't know if you read that book yet, but I recommend it uh, because that was the time of my mother living in the West Village and those artists being in the Vi East Village. But uh, I thought I'd share that with Elaine de Kooning. She was quite the artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the artists that she has in her collection is Betty Parsons, and Betty Parsons was uh, very well known in the art world as an art dealer, aside from being uh, an artist herself. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I was the collection, the art collection, the permanent collection at Radford University is filled with uh, artworks from the former Betty Parsons Gallery in New York. Uh, and the reason why there are maybe about 200, and maybe I believe it's over 260 artworks that are, were taken from the Betty Parsons uh, Gallery uh, State. Um, and those were handpicked by uh, your mother. So uh, Dorothy uh, actually had the opportunity to handpick all of these artworks for the purpose of giving them to uh, Radford University. Uh, so the Radford University Art Collection, uh, in many ways, is like Dorothy's handpicked objects, like, like she'd have in her own collection. I thought that was an interesting thing to add. Well, thank you for sharing. Uh, one of the artists that's in this collection, his name is Bob Shelton. Did you know him? He was from Birmingham yeah. Southern College. No, I didn't know him, no. Um, so I reached out to him and I told him I was going to be um, doing this uh, Zoom. And he wanted to say that my mother had traded a piece of her art and that's not uncommon. She did that yeah. a lot to support other artists so that he could, uh, his could be part of the collection. Um, and he's hoping to see this. So I told him, yes, I'll get all that information. Um, he's, um, quite interesting. They all have great stories. That's the one thing that I've learned traveling around the country and meeting with artists. Uh, they have stories uh, and I hope to, to share those stories with the public. Yeah, uh, a, a lot of the artists that are in your mother's collection uh, are artists of our own generation uh, and abstract artists. Uh, mm -hmm. Your mother was a confirmed abstractionist um, part of the abstract expressionist movement, uh, but she also evolved into other directions, um, moving away from uh, the spirit of pure abstract expressionism. Uh, I mean, her later work is, is in a sense, almost a form like what you have behind you. Uh, I always think of uh, sort of a combination of abstract expressionism and pop art, <laughs> because in many ways it has sort of a pop art feel to it, but the forms are strictly taken out of abstract expressionist painting and, and put it into the air in many cases. Yes, and, and I was saying to Talia uh, before we got on that my mother felt that she was the first to start to collect abstract expressionism uh, pieces of art because she was of that period. So oh, yeah. I, I, I guess I'm the second generation uh -huh. of collectors for the abstract expressionism and then my children and that's the way collecting art is it's yeah i think collect i think collecting from your mother uh and it shows i think very much in uh uh the uh collection the, her personal collection uh shows this very much uh had to do with uh having a personal connection to the spirit of the work uh and in many cases the artists themselves um, so there were, uh, and I think I collect, uh, you know, to a large extent, uh, out of the same type of interest. Uh, many of the things that I collect uh, relate to people that I have connections with on one level or another. Um, either I knew them, or um, my uh, work as an art historian took me into their realm on some level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the artists that is in the collection is uh, Alice Baber. Yes. <laughs> uh, 
And that's one of the artists that my mother said you'll be, uh, that I'll be getting. And it's, I, I love her work. And unfortunately, yes. she passed away at the age of 65. Mm -hmm. And I think of my mother celebrating her 92nd birthday and thinking that if my mother as an artist had passed away at 65, all the, the art that is lost when an artist dies early is such a shame. And I, I feel so bad because Alice Baber was one of my mother's dearest friends. Yes. And if I could just share a short story of Alice Baber, I was at a, actually the University of Alabama. My mother had a big show in Tuscaloosa back in the 80s. And I went uh, there to see my mother's art. Uh, they had a permanent piece there. And I saw that, went down to the storage because unfortunately that's where it was stored. And I, I just said to the gallery director, oh, it's too bad that she's not upstairs on display somewhere in the campus. And right next to her was an Alice Baber. And I said, oh, my mother's right next to Alice Baber. And he said, you know Alice Baber. And I shared the story with him. And he says, come over here. And just around the corner was a Lee Krasner. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my mother is in good company. Her friends are down here. And that's the way she saw all the artists and all the works uh, as friends. And, and so I uh, now having this collection and I'm so pleased that it, the first, uh, since my mother passed away, the first exhibition is at Roanoke College because Roma College is, is some, it's very important to me. I established an art scholarship there shortly after my mother died. And of course, my mother was born in Roanoke College and it's a, very important to her legacy. So uh -huh. I, I applaud uh, Talia and, and those at Roanoke College for making this happen. And I just hope everyone in Roanoke area gets to see it. Yeah. Now you were mentioning Alice Baber. Um, I knew other people, other artists who uh, were dear friends of hers as well um, uh, out in uh, the Hamptons. Um, but I, when I look at your mother's work uh, and I think about the forms that, I, uh, that appear in the paintings of Alice Baber, uh, I do see a connection. I see uh, uh, something of a similar spirit, uh, except Alice Baber's expressing it in flat terms and your mother is expressing it three-dimensionally. But I really think there's a connection between their work. Uh, yes, I couldn't agree uh, more. Um, your, your wife is an artist too. Yes, and she did a portrait of your mother, as you know. Um, yeah. uh, Cause we knew her, as I said, we knew her very well. In fact, uh, you know, I, uh, we had, we had an occasion, I think I was mentioning uh, my marriage to you before, uh, when my wife and I got married, uh, we were supposed to have a formal wedding, which we did have, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. in uh, New York at a Buddhist temple, because my wife is a Buddhist. Um, and as it turned out, we found out that the temple in New York would not be able to give us a legal wedding uh, license, uh, a legal wedding. So uh, we had to do something quickly and your, uh, your mother was visiting Radford University uh, for a week or so at that time. So we wound up uh, going to the courthouse in advance of the New York wedding and your mother was our only witness. Uh, so we knew her very well because uh, she came with us to our legal wedding <laughs> and uh, took pictures of us and we took pictures with her, but we were the only people there besides the justice of the peace. <laughs> uh, but in any case, uh, uh, we knew your mother very well. And uh, that's why uh, my wife did the portrait of her. And, uh, you know, it's a very personal portrait that I think captures a lot of her spirit. Yeah. Yes, I remember sharing that portrait. Yeah. Art, why is it important for people to see what an artist collects? Well, that's, that's a good question. I, I think that uh, it's important because it, uh, it tells you something about the generosity or lack of it maybe of the person who's collecting. Because uh, uh, first of all, a person who collects works by other artists and 
has an extensive collection, is an artist who has interests that go beyond their own self-absorption. Um, in order to uh, really have interest in the work of other people and to collect their work widely, you have to uh, step outside of yourself and uh, really have an empathy for other human beings uh, and see something in it of great value that contributes to your life, uh, which is why I think she collected. And uh, plus she wanted to share it with others. Uh, so I think in a nutshell, that's why I think uh, it's important to know something about uh, why an artist might collect. I couldn't, have, there's no way I could have said it better than you said it. And I thank you because I'm asked all the time, uh, you know, why, why is there a collection? Well, you just said it <laughs> beautifully. So I'll now be able to use that. And I, I mean, there, there, are, there are many artists who uh, only collect themselves. <laughs> <laughs> or they, they put other people's work away in drawers. Um, so uh, <clears throat> oh, I do have to say, though, uh, I, I do recall uh, visiting your mother uh, on numerous occasions in New York um, uh, at her studio. And of course, her studio, she was surrounded with her whole work. But other than that, I think she had a great interest in uh, how other people uh, functioned in the world and what they did. I mean, I always felt that she was very generous with her time and she loved, she loved other people. I, I have to say that about your mother. Uh, she loved to socialize with other people and uh, she was a great uh, entertainer. <laughs> well, uh, when I do my presentations and I just did a presentation yes. last week at Holland University, I, I talk about that generosity with her time um, mm -hmm. and, and I think the art collection shows that generosity of, of trading her art or buying art or supporting art or feeling that this art is important to pass on to future generations. And I, I think this upcoming documentary that you were actually interviewed for, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Life in Color, Discovering Dorothy Gillespie, which will be screened in Roanoke, another a plug for Roanoke. Um, I think. What, we'll, do you know when that? Do you know when that will be taking place? Well, I actually last week I was um, meeting with the um, um, executive director of, of one of the theaters down in in Roanoke. Uh, that's going to be possibly displaying it, showing it, and we're looking at uh, probably, maybe even on her birthday, June 29th. Oh. Um, which would be great. Uh, so sometime late spring. And I, I think having you interviewed and, and your wife and all these actually 61 people interviewed, I, I think people will get an idea of her generosity and time with time that she spent with people. And yeah. Can I add to the generosity uh, uh, idea? Um, your, your mother uh, played a very important role, I think, in the women's movement in New York City. And uh, as such, um, she associated herself with a lot of other you know, women artists and uh, several of them being in her collection too, as you know, as you pointed out. Uh, but I think her role as uh, someone who plays uh, a very important part in the, uh, the beginnings of the women mo women's movement uh, that her role really uh, had to do more than anything else with service to other women, uh, rather than self, uh, you know, self promotion. Um, she she wasn't as much a self promoter as she was generous of her time to other women, um, who she saw as uh, spearheading uh, 20th century women's art. Um, but I thought I would point that out. Yes, and she loved to do group shows. Of course, everyone loves to have a solo show, and and she had over a hundred solo shows. But she yeah, did. yes, she did. But she also was, uh, I think, very well known as an organizer of women's events uh, during the women's movements. And the organizer is somebody who brings other people together. Uh, the organizer isn't somebody who just promotes oneself, uh, and that's what I think your mother's. Uh, places in history. Yeah. Yeah, you, you bring up the women's movement. Of course, in the 70s, uh, my mother was part of the, the group there that was looking at alternative 
ways to display their art because museums, mm -hmm. galleries were showing mostly men. And right. so she displayed it along with other women in Central Park. Mm -hmm. And I think the significance of the outdoor environmental uh, yeah. period of her life was that it made, she couldn't show paintings outdoors and she wanted the, the viewer to be part of, of her art. So it brought on the three dimensional. So being part of the women's movement really inspired her to come yeah. through with the metal three dimensional art. So I think I think she was inspired by other artists, and I think uh, hopefully I know young artists tell me they're inspired by my mother's life and her and her art. So collecting art, other art is is a way. And I think if I'm not, yeah, I think there is um, a student who graduated from Holland University, did her senior paper and actually purchased a small sculpture of my mother's last wow. year. She was so inspired when she did her paper. And isn't that great? This young student, art student, never knew my mother. And, and that's great when, when she can inspire other artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your mother was one of a kind. <laughs> Um, let's see, so uh, Jennifer Spoon is part of the collection. Did you know Jennifer Spoon from oh, Radford? Yes, yeah, I knew Jennifer very well. Uh, you know, she was at Radford uh, uh, when I was there. Okay, that's great. Um, David Shapiro is also an artist that's in, um, in the collection. And the connection with my mother there was he had a studio on uh, West 52nd Street. My mother had a studio uh, right above his studio. And he unfortunately passed away. Uh, and after my mother passed away, his, his widow contacted me because she now had to uh, deal with all the art. And she wanted to know how I was dealing with m my mother's art. And that's something that artists have to contend with. And so for the last nine years, that's what I've been doing. Um, and I just recently found out that David Shapiro's wife passed away. And so I'm now wondering what's happening to his art now that, you know, his, his wife passed away. And that's something that uh, is very important that we artists secure so that when their art is, when they pass on that there's, um, instructions, directions on what will happen to their art. Yeah. So I, I was fortunate that uh, I took on this responsibility of my mother's collection. And um, I'm enjoying, you know, learning about all these artists going through this catalog. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to come to the opening on, I believe it's the fifth uh november 5th is a friday i'm not oh. yeah so it's um i'm actually will not be able to be there i will be in orlando you had mentioned orlando as yes. being one of my mother's homes and where yes. she has a studio and i will be yep. there meeting with uh the university of central florida because as I said, we have to think about what happens when an artist passes on. So when I pass on, I have to make sure that my mother's collection of all the art that's going to be displayed at uh, Rono College, there'll be some type of uh, process that will be mm -hmm. for the future. And so all the art that, that I have of my mother's art that you see here behind me, yes. Uh, that's the, the discussions I'm having with, with the University of Central Florida. Gotcha. Well, you're, you're in a, uh, you have a similar role to play that your mother played with art she collected. Correct. <laughs> Correct. It's like passing on the- You're a caretaker of the collection. I it, is not, you, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to humanity. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, what I'm doing with my mother's art, just to throw in a plug about my mother's art, is I'm yes. uh, donating it to hospitals and, and uh, libraries, public places, so mm -hmm. that her art can be seen, as well as 
hundreds of collectors that have her art. I mean, yeah, he, she did commission art all around the country in Radford, of course, Roanoke are, are mm -hmm. art collectors. But I'm really always excited when, when children of collectors of my mother art, my mother's art come to me and say, we'd love to donate your, our art to your foundation. And that yes. gives me the opportunity now to donate it to other organizations that can appreciate yes. it. Well, art should be passed on. Yeah, now I have a few pieces of your mother's work as well. So uh, I have the same attitude toward collecting as well. Great, I'll have to come see it. And you're not far from, from the studio. No, 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 not at all, no. Um, I, you know, I'm in the Hudson Valley. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. great, that's great. Um, so let's see, any of the other artists that, uh, these artists I've met, Marilyn Rowland, did you ever meet Marilyn Rowland? No, no, I didn't, no. She was a no. Florida um, uh, resident and I got to see her work, unfortunately no. she passed on. And uh, you know, when I say, oh, unfortunately no. she passed on, but artists, visual artists are blessed. My mother, yeah. all these other artists are blessed in that when they, pass on, their art stays, and hopefully is displayed. Yes. Um, when an author passes on, well, of course, you've got to get the book, you've got to, uh, you know, go to the library, well, those days are over, but you've got to, you know, download the book, whatever, or, or uh, you know, if it's a ballet, you need a stage, but a visual artist really is blessed. And my, my mother and all these other artists are so blessed because their work can be out there for, for centuries. Well, let me just uh, add something because we've talked a lot about uh, your mother's attachment to other women and uh, the role she played in the feminist movement and some of the female artists who she knew and whose work she collected. But I should point out that she also collected a fairly wide range of art by men. Uh, so there are some very, very uh, prominent male figures in her collection, uh, ranging from something very unlike her own style in the work of Thomas Hart Benton, uh, the regionalist artist, um, to uh, Robert Rauschenberg, mm -hmm. uh, and very different in character from Rauschenberg uh, or Benton would be uh, Joseph Albers. Uh, who's a, you know, very, uh, you know, rigid approach to geometry is very different than your mother's, although he was an abstractionist. Uh, and uh, this wonderful um, um, drawing, uh, or I should say work on paper, uh, because it actually is, uh, I think, wash uh, by Robert Motherwell. Uh, so she has a, a, a number of really prominent male artists in her collection. So it's not a feminist collection by any means, uh, but it's, she's, she didn't discriminate. <laughs> Speaking of but, Motherwell, I've got some yes. bad news to tell, I've got some bad news to tell you. The Motherwell is not part of the collection. Oh, it isn't? No, oh, unfortunately, unfortunately, when my mother left the art to uh, her children, Yes. Uh, my brother and sister insisted on selling it. Since oh, then, they did. Yes. Yeah, oh, since then, yeah. I've uh, put a kibosh on selling any of the artwork. Um, yes. And I knew that it meant a lot to my mother, the mother well, because uh, yes. it happened to be, he lived down in the village where my mother yes. lived. And I, I even said that to my brother and sister, but we could talk an hour about what happens mm -hmm. when a parent leaves art to three children. Right, of course, <laughs> of course. They can yeah. fight over it. But whatever the case might be there, uh, Gary, uh, Robert Motherwell was part of her collection. Yes, and, and while she was alive, it, she yes. knew it was very important to her. So yes. I'm trying to keep this collection uh, together. And I think, yes. After the Rono College uh, exhibition, that so, was... so aside from the motherwell, what other pieces? Uh, because the uh, the show that uh, I was connected with at Radford University, along with my colleagues uh, Steve Robbery and Dorothy Mercer, who were art historians 
Uh, Steve was, in fact, the director. Steve Arbery is the director of the university's art museum. Um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> we put together the show and artist collects um, your mother's uh, collection back in 2001, along with a catalog. Um, uh, but of, of the artists who were included in that show, aside from Motherwell, uh, who else is not in the collection? Well, none of them were sold. Um, oh, they weren't? Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Louise Nevelson's, um, <laughs> I had to fight to keep that together. Okay. So no, those, those are all should be oh, there. So, so Motherwell, the Motherwell wasn't uh, removed from the collection? No, that's the only one that was sold. Oh, that was so okay. Okay, gotcha. I think it'll okay. stay intact. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, as I said to my brother and sister, I said yes. uh, this this was never an exhibition, a collection of rich and rare. It was something that was important to our mother. Yes, and, uh, that's what I've been using to keep it together by saying, you know, to my siblings that this only means something to our mother and now to her foundation. Okay, well, it's it's great that the collection has, uh, with that one exception, stayed to stayed together. That's really quite remarkable that it uh, that it held intact, especially uh, under the circumstances you described. Well, my mother was smart, except yeah. for that, she was smart. <laughs> uh, upon her death, all the art that you see around me now, yeah. and hundreds of pieces in the in the mm -hmm. snoop. This is the gallery part. Uh, mm -hmm left to the foundation. Unfortunately, the private collection was left to her children. Gotcha. And so with this art that's in the foundation here, my brother and sister can't say, oh, you know, I want to sell that or I want that. Yeah. It's the foundation. So gotcha. lessons to be learned. Yeah. Um, so hopefully when this is in the foundation, I won't uh, have to worry about that years from now, long after I'm gone. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> the foundation certainly does have its purpose, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. There is, uh, the, and I'm quite proud of, of what the foundation has done since my mother passed away. She was so involved with her art that she basically left no plans or instructions. And I, I mentioned that before, and that's not unusual for artists. So, yes. uh, I'm hoping that artists, uh, when I speak to them, I, I tell them, please, please make arrangements before you pass on so that you, your art will live on. Mm -hmm. and they, and that, <clears throat> well, yeah. they, I think probably her best arrangement of all was giving birth to you, Gary. <laughs> you know, you know, I said her best arrangement for doing that was giving birth to you. Well, uh, <laughs> no, you're, very, you're a very dutiful thank son. Thank you. you really but uh, I'm asked all the time, uh, you know, uh, do you think your mother would be proud of what you're doing for her legacy? And I don't think she really cared uh, about her legacy. I think she would care in terms of her art inspiring young women artists. So that's yes. what I'm trying to do. Or put it in hospitals, place in the hospitals where it can be of healing, that would be good. As for her legacy, she didn't care. She didn't want to be famous. And, and I, that's something that I, I'm wondering, the artists that were in here, do you think any of them wanted to be famous? Probably, yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that uh, very often artists want fame. Mm. I think Not that my mother. It, goes, I it, goes, it goes with the territory, I think, yes. Uh, and, but I think your description of your mother is accurate. Yeah, she, she always felt that fame, notoriety would interfere with her work and her work was the most important thing. And that's why there were no instructions left. And that's why uh, when I spoke about all these artists uh, that she knew, Grace Hardigan and, and Elaine de Kooning and Lee Krasner, they really were driven to um, be represented by galleries in the 40s and 50s. And my mother really didn't want to be, be that. She would be more proud that she was a collector. So her legacy is not fame. 
it's people saying like yourself, you know, she was generous with her time. That is more important to her than, you know, being famous and her works, her works will never go for millions. Elaine de Kooning, yes. Lee Krasner, yes. But that was not, that should not be the purpose of, uh, of being an artist or a goal. Yeah. I mean, your mother definitely had a uh, strong drive as an artist, uh, on the other hand, uh, yes. and she was very hardworking and uh, sometimes critical of other artists who she didn't see as hardworking enough. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, she believed in discipline that way, uh, <clears throat> that an artist should actually uh, really focus and spend time on what, on what they do. Uh, she did have that side to her. Um, uh, so, so she was dedicated. She was dedicated to uh, her vision and um, also interested in other people um, and more interested in uh, the vision than she was in her personal self. Um, but I think she had a balanced life too. I think she was very, uh, uh, very, very uh, dedicated to her family. Uh, she often spoke about you and spoke very highly of you, Gary. I will say that. Well, thank you. As, as, a, middle, as a middle child, I wasn't expecting much. You know, it was uh, <laughs> my sister uh, who would get, of course, she was born first, and she always said she hated the fact that she had a sibling. And then my brother was born, you know, yeah. seven years after me, and he got spoiled. So as a middle child, you're sort of in the middle, and you really don't want to be seen or heard. Uh, yeah. And un I'm not saying unfortunately, but after my mother passed away, it's sort of, I've, I've taken it on and I've just enjoyed it. The most enjoyable part is actually meeting artists and, yes. and you know, asking them what kind of art they do. And maybe it's in my genes to do that, but I find artists to be so creative Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, thank you, being an artist. Well, you know, as, as someone who, uh, you know, appreciate, appreciated your mother uh, very much, uh, you know, I personally will also thank you for all you're doing to uh, preserve her legacy and, uh, and the collection that she uh, put together as well. So uh, I'm, very, I'm very impressed with everything you've done and uh, with your enthusiasm for it. Thank you. And I think we've reached the end of our time. Yeah, we've gone over, uh, but there's so many subjects I'd love to talk to you about later. So I can't thank you enough for joining me in the studio here and talking about my mother and, and the artists that she collected, who were her friends. Yes. Enjoyed it. And we'll have many conversations in the future, I hope. Absolutely.